What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin Davis and today we're gonna to give you an updated late 2019 review of the Fat Shark HDOs, the most coveted goggles out there on the planet right now. Everyone loves these. Lots of people that I know that are into multi-GP racing, X-Class, uh, uh, loads of variety of different types of FPV, long range, short range, micro brushless. Everyone loves these goggles. Now, are they still relevant at this point in the game versus something like my favorite Skyzone Sky O3s? These do not have OLED screens in them. They're regular LED screens, but these have ultra bright OLED screens. When you put these on for the first time, you're gonna be amazed at how bright they are. Instantly, you see a huge difference. So since I have gotten these, I have been bringing these with me just in case uh, I have a blackout with these. It does happen with Fat Shark goggles. So it actually can happen with any pair of goggles at any time, uh, which is a huge bummer. But being that Fat Shark repair facility is close enough, uh, I believe it's in California, you can send these off to be repaired if you do have a blackout. So um, you can contact Fat Shark, which is super awesome. Uh, so these have been taking a little bit of a back seat since I have these to test out for you guys. Now one thing about this pair of goggles, if you're new to FPV, these are probably not the goggles that you're going to buy right off the bat. You might want to look at the Fat Shark Attitude V5s. Those are also OLED goggles. They just have a little less resolution on them and we will be doing a full comparison of those two goggles coming up on the channel uh, for you guys. But what you have to know right away, if you are new getting into FPV hobby, that these are $499 and they are compatible with just about any goggle module out there on the market. Rapid Fire is one of the big popular ones that everybody wants. You also have the uh, Forge module, which is mine here, but the Forge will require the second module bay on the right-hand side of the goggle for that diversity setup. You're gonna have to run the wire across the middle. You have an LED screen over here and push buttons to change the channel on the side, but I'm using the Lumineer AX2 2 on there as well and they're super small really nice because you can fit it inside the case that comes along with these goggles that's a really nice thing but my point about this is that when you spend the 499 dollars you're still going to have to spend another hundred uh, or more on your goggle module so it's going to put you up around 600 dollars plus and then by the time you're done adding antennas on the outside you're you're going to be close to 650 dollars at the, probably at the minimum to get these goggles started. Now, lots of us already have antennas, so we just slap on a couple antennas, no big deal. But depending on what module you decide to put on there is gonna raise the cost of these significantly. So let's go ahead now and let's put them on the bench. Let me talk about the specs on these. Some of you guys might not have seen these on the channel just yet. And um, I have been testing them now for several months so I can give you an honest opinion on the Fat Shark HDOs. Here we go, guys, let's check them out. And there they are, guys. This is the box you'll get in the mail. Pretty nice looking box, if I don't say so myself. Let's spin it around and look at the back. It says the specs on the back just really quickly. It says 37 degree field of view, and that's your FOV. They are also HDMI supported. They have an HDMI port on the very bottom with 1080p support. So um, could you run some HD signal into these? Yes, you can. That's pretty cool. We also have 720p XGA displays on them and those are OLED so they are definitely like twice to <laughs> three or four times brighter than the regular LED screens like my Sky O3s that I love and they're updated integrated analog DVR um, but there's no HDMI recording there so um, that's kind of a bummer but maybe in the future uh, 59 to 69 IPD range and that's interpupillary distance adjusters that move the screens back and forth for you right there they're also compatible with NTSC and PAL and they're auto selecting you can go into the menus and change it if you want to as well and they have head tracking on them which is great and they have the modular receiver bay and inside the box this is your case that you get it's very similar to the V5 uh, the Attitude V5 case, almost exactly the same that I have sitting over here to the side. Just a little bit different with the sticker there that says 1.2 a rapid fire DVR firmware on the Fat Shark HDOs versus the V5s. So um, opening these up, you have a nice zipper on the outside of the box. And the cool thing is you can fit these 
inside with these Lumineer AX2 two antennas on there. And these work pretty good for proximity flying. If you're doing freestyle anything up close, you're going to have no problems with those antennas. This is a little lens cleaner that comes inside the box, which is pretty sweet. You have a little foam padding in here to make sure they get transported nice and safe inside the case. You also get a product card and this is the QR code to go straight to the fatshark.com manuals. This will show you directly to the HDO manual and you can go in there and check out all the specs. Little Fat Shark logo on this side and we also have a sheet of stickers which is cool. It's got that classic Fat Shark shark on there with his big beastie smile and we have some newer logos on here that I've seen on the antennas on the V5 and the newer Fat Shark logo on the very bottom as well. Also in the box you do get the Fat Shark battery which goes onto the side of your head strap that's going to go around your head. It's going to go in on the right side and it's going to plug in with this little barrel connector right here. You've got a balance port right here which plugs into your fan unit which will make your fan unit work. It has a display here for letting you know how charged up your 18650s are and you're going to have to buy two extra 18650s to go inside this. My suggestion is to hop on the links down below, grab a handful of 18650s and a charger as well um, because you're going to constantly be switching these out. Probably my top recommendation for you guys is to go ahead and set that to the side. Buy one of these. This is the XT60 converter with the Fat Shark barrel connector right here. And what you can do is you can take that all that weight off your head and you can use something like a 3S2200, which is my favorite. This is an old E-Flight that I've had um, now for about five years. And this thing is still trucking, no problem. And you can get your LiPos charged up a little quicker out in the field. So that this is my better recommendation for your power setup. And there they are, the goggles that everybody wants. The HDO is sitting on my bench and we talked about the batteries and I have to talk about the voltage range on these because it didn't seem to be mentioned in some of the other reviews. Um, you're going to be able to plug in a 2 and 3S battery to these. The, the voltage range is 7 to 13 volts. So uh, my Sky Zones have a little higher voltage range, uh, I believe from 7 to 26 volts. So I can actually use a 4S battery on my Sky Zones. Um, so the only thing that's going to work for your fan operation is a 2S battery because you are limited by the power port here. I kind of like it on the Sky Zones that they are sort of built into the power source from the barrel connector. Um, they're not a separate power supply, so it would be nice if the new versions of the HDOs would have a, a sort of an all-in-one type of fan unit uh, instead of having two different power sources. That would probably be the smarter way to do it. Uh, we also have a higher resolution on these versus the, the Sky Zone 03 is my favorites. But also, guys, honestly, I'm, I have some this Sky 03 Zero, uh, the OLED versions of the Sky Zone 03 is coming in, um, hopefully sometime soon. And I will give you a comparison of these two goggles. They're they're probably going to be close to the same price. So the good thing about those goggles is that they will include a module built in, just like my Sky 03s, uh, and you won't have to buy any type of module for these. All you have to do is add your favorite antennas, which happen to be right now my Fox Ear Echo and this Lollipop 2. It's the older one, but it still works great. Uh, and like I said, the fan is integrated into the power system right here in a much higher voltage range on those. But these have nicer screens, so I have been using these a lot more, and I can still use that same barrel connector. They are cross-compatible. This barrel connector works on my Sky Zone 03s and the HDOs, so that's kind of nice. But moving on, we have a native resolution on here from 960 pixels to 720 pixel resolution and um, super bright screens. I love them. 37 degree field of view. We do have the built in DVR with the micro SD card right here in the middle, like we had on the previous generation Fat Sharks. But these are actually a little bit shallow in here, a little bit less hard to get to. You can get those in and out with your fingernails. And I don't have much fingernails right now, but I'm still able to get that card in and out. Up here on the top, you have your display control. It's going to get you into your menus. Channels right here, up and down, 1 through 8. On this side, we have volume control, the HT button right here, and we have analog and record right here. These are also joystick-style controllers, so you can access the menus. If you want to start recording a video to your DVR while you're flying, you have to press on the analog record button for about 5 seconds, and you'll hear it beep 
and then a red light will show up here between your eyes. And it's kind of nice because you can see this pretty well without taking your goggles all the way off. And then press once again, sort of long press it about one second, and you'll hear these goggles beep, and that will start that light to flashing. And you'll be recording an AVI down to your smart card in the middle, right there in the DVR bay. Now I also like the fact that they did upgrade the faceplate on the HDOs. It's a little different now, and we also have a leather foam pad foam on the inside of leather and these do come off by velcro so you can take them on and off if you like to wash this you can wash it about every six months i'd say uh, maybe even less to keep a lot of that bacteria off of this faceplate because the more you sweat on this faceplate the more bacteria is building up here and eventually it starts to make you break out uh, i have pretty sensitive skin on my face so i was noticing i was getting a rash on my face at one point using my goggles pretty much every day without washing them. So um, one thing to think about is replacing this or washing it about every six months or so. On the bottom down here, we have some more things going on. We have over to the far left here, we have the data port, which is gonna be your head tracking module. This works with Easy UHF. It's compatible with Immersion RC's stuff because um, Fat Shark and Immersion RC seem to be the same entity. Also, we have the inner pupillary adjusters right here, and that moves their screens back and forth on the horizontal axis, and you can figure out what makes them the, the best setting for your eyes, depending on your focus. And one other thing is that they also include diopter inserts. For you guys that have glasses can get the prescription diopters made. I believe there's a link over to um, some company in Germany that does those. He has a pretty high prescription rate, so he has diopters in his and they work just fine now. He can finally use his fat sharks. And down here on the bottom left hand side of your goggles, you have a QR code. That's going to take you straight to the manual at any time. And I haven't really seen any other goggle manufacturer put their manual QR code right on the goggles. So that's kind of nice. You can just pull that manual up anytime you need it. The next button down here is the RX button. This powers it on and off for your external module. So you're going to need to have that switched over to one to make that LaForge or TrueDX or whatever else you're using on your goggles power up and get power. You have headphone port right here. That's a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And we have HDMI down here. And that's going to support any type of HD system out there because these goggles are 720p and it will support 1080p input. So uh, pretty nice that you have that option right there. So they seem to have thrown everything that we want or could possibly need into these goggles. Most of the guys that I know that are flying this absolutely love them with the rapid fire, and that seems to be the module of choice. Um, I'll try to put a link down below for that one. Um, also, one of my modules of choice, like I said before, is that True DX module, and that one's kind of nice because you don't have to use the secondary module bay on the far right-hand side of the goggles. That's pretty sweet. But let's take a look at the Attitude V5s as well because um, the Attitude V5s are probably going to be your next choice. If you're looking for a pair of goggles, uh, this pair of goggles is nice because it, it does have uh, OLED screens on there, but they're not quite as high resolution as the Fatshark HDOs. Those are 960 by 720 resolution, and your uh, Attitude V5s are coming in at 640 by 400. So comparing both of these two goggles out in the field myself, I did notice right away that these were uh, a little bit, seem to be fuzzier compared to the HDOs, but that's to be expected. Um, these are around the $299 price point, whereas these are the $499 price point without the modules and the antennas. The cool thing about these are that you get a DVR, you get your antennas, and you get the built-in module on the side right here. And they are diversity, so um, that's kind of nice as well. But these do not have any type of HDMI support. So uh, you can see on the bottom here, whereas the HDOs have HDMI support, the V5s do not. So um, you won't be able to do any type of HD video digital video input um, whereas the hdos can so that's the big difference there between these two and both of these goggles are 4-3 on the aspect ratio so they're not switchable to 16 by 9 that's another thing to um, keep in mind and these support an sd card up to about 32 gigabytes 
I uh, haven't tried anything bigger there. The IPD adjustment on these are 59 by 69, pretty much the same thing as the HDOs again. And these have a 30 degree field of view, whereas the Fat Shark HDOs have a 37 degree field of view. So for someone that can deal with a little bit less resolution, these are actually a pretty good choice uh, as far as the price goes. $299, you get everything in the box that you need. Um, you also get a battery with the, the same type of uh, 18650 battery slots inside there but if you were to ask me which one should I buy Justin should I get the HDOs or should I get the Attitude V5s I, I have heard that a lot of people really like these and mainly because of the price you still get the OLED screens they are brighter than my HD3s that I had before and um, they just seem to be the only thing that they're lacking to me is the resolution um, that's the only drawback but for the price at $299 versus around six to seven hundred for the HDOs. If you're the kind of guy or girl who just wants to spend less money to have something to get started with, these are probably the ones to get right away. Unless you're the kind of guy or girl that has to have like the best of the best right out of the gate. Um, that's totally up to you for as far as money goes. If money is no object, grab the HDOs by all means. Um, if you want something more on a budget but you still want OLED with the modules, everything all in one box ready to go. Um, grab the Attitude V5s for the cheaper option. So overall, I think we have a pretty slick pair of goggles right here, and honestly, they are the most sought after goggles out there in the FPV community right now. The HDO is the pair of goggles that everybody wants to own. Um, and I have to say that, uh, honestly, I don't think that, that the DJI digital FPV system goggles are going to replace the old tried and true analog systems just yet I just don't think we're there yet but um, like I said mine are coming in the mail um, but I don't see people just jumping ship to digital just yet uh, I think that DJ I was hoping that everybody and their grandmother would probably go out and and, and buy that system over this one uh, but as far as FPV racing and uh, freestyle and all those communities go I just don't think they're quite there yet, and they, they, they're not going to dominate the, the market with those. I, I think they're going to be kind of a, a niche market for, for the HD crowd. So um, I think that the HDOs are going to reign supreme for quite some time until they decide to come out with the version 2 of the HDOs. Uh, I would like to see maybe a little bit better DVR because these have the same DVR that the original HD3s had, and uh, I was really hoping for a little bit better um, sort of uh, file support for maybe throwing the uh, MPEG format in there or MOV format would be nice to have that switchable for the Mac crowd. So, um, and uh, <laughs> that would be, that would be a nice addition versus the AVI files, but I can convert the AVI files, not a big deal. Um, but I think that overall, yeah, these are the still very, very current for late 2019 and um, everybody still loves these. They're not going anywhere. So that's about it for my review of the Fat Shark HDOs. I have been wanting to get a pair of these for some time and I did request them a few months back last year when they came out. Um, I never ended up getting a pair, but it's good that they came in this summer because there are lots of HD options coming out right now and DJI being the big one out there, uh, that's gonna be the huge competitor to the top goggles in the industry. DJI is coming for Fat Shark. So will these hold up to the Fat Shark digital FPV system? That system is around $800 to $900. Um, so I, I, I feel like I'm one of those people that is skeptical of HD FPV and uh, I remain skeptical until I try them. They are coming in the mail to me and when I test them, I'm gonna give you an honest opinion about them, but I've been talking to other people who have tried them for the last month and there are some mixed reviews on the digital system from DJI. So um, can we freestyle them? Can we put them behind trees like we can our regular analog signal goggles? So that's going to be a big, big question um, to me that I want to address to you guys. Are they going to be practical? Um, some people like the little bit of fuzz that these create before it goes fuzzy on you and comes back. Um, DJI goggles are going to go black and and they also have the question of OSD and um, will it work with iNav? All kinds of things um, are going to be up in the air with the DJI goggles. So I think as far as 
the DJI digital system replacing the HDOs, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, they're not going to blow Fat Shark out of the water with these goggles. They're still going to sell like crazy uh, because if you want the best of the best, it's the HDO still hands down. So my rating for these still in late 2019 is still five stars from me. Um, everything about the goggles is great. Next version, the V2, I'd like to see that they were switchable between 4.3 and 16 by 9 would be my my only big recommendation to Fat Shark and uh, possibly a, a DVR upgrade as well. So uh, you spend $500 on a pair of goggles. I'd like to see a little better DVR in there. So uh, maybe they can work on that. But everything else is awesome about these goggles. They're absolutely worth the money. If you're the guy that wants the top goggles out there anywhere on the planet for analog FPV, the HDOs are still the best bet in late 2019. Thanks again for watching my honest reviews, guys, and hanging out with me in the FPV den. I'm Justin Davis, guys. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.